Hey everyone, how's it going? Today I am super excited to show you my amazing new pedals from ACD Unlimited. These are the mind-blowing Darwin FTWs. The reason these pedals are so special to me. Hey everyone, just before I get into the video properly, I need to add that when I filmed this, I didn't realize just how much there was to talk about with these pedals. So I want to show you playing examples and different setup options as well. And the video was just too long. So I've cut this into two parts. Please make sure you watch all the way through on this and then have a look at part two. I'm uploading them at the same time. And there's also going to be future videos where I go much more specifically in depth at certain things like comparing the strap drive and direct drive versions. The reason these pedals are so special to me is because the number one thing I look for in a bass drum pedal is versatility. And I'm not just talking about the adjustment possibilities. I mean, I want a pedal that's going to be perfectly silent so I can use it in a studio, but then built like a tank so that I can take it on tour. And I know that in either of those situations, it's gonna work just right. But also, a pedal that allows me to feather the bass drum if I'm playing jazz. To hit hard if I'm playing pop or rock. to be able to not get in my way if I want to play really, really fast if I'm playing metal. And this is the first pedal I've ever had that lets me do all of those different things with the same settings. So here they are, or one of them anyway. Now the Darwin FTWs are available in long boards like this, in short boards in black like this, which is super sexy, or in a more traditional aluminium finish. And they're available as strap drive or direct drive, single pedals, double pedals for both right and left-handed players, and also a middle pedal for people that want a really symmetrical setup. And the super cool thing is that if you get a double pedal or a middle pedal, those can break off perfectly into two actual single pedals, which is exactly what this is. This is the slave side to my double pedal. To separate this into two single pedals, all you need to do is take the beater out of the main side and put it into the slave side. Undo the drive shaft. You've now got two fully functional single pedals. Now it's worth mentioning that with all of these adjustments that we're going to do, there are actually markings notched into the aluminium. So it's really easy to gauge what adjustments you've made, see the differences visually, and also then replicate it if you're going from either two single pedals or a double pedal and you wanna get the settings the same on both sides. So the first adjustment we're gonna talk about is the one that every pedal in the universe has, and it's a spring adjustment. Now what's really nice about this is that it's rock solid and won't loosen but at the same time, incredibly easy to adjust. In fact, it's so easy to adjust, you can do it while you're playing the pedal. And you can just do it with one hand by turning this. That's gonna either raise or lower the spring to create more or less tension. One of my favorite adjustments on this pedal is the hoop clamp adjustment. Now, I'm not talking about how it clamps onto the drum, I'm talking about where it is on the pedal itself. You can actually move this entire unit further to the front or further back on the bass plate. Now what that does is it essentially allows you to have the bass drum pedal closer or further away from the drum at the point that it's attached. So once you, um, you dial it in right, you can make it so that you're hitting the bass drum perfectly dead on so that the beater is completely upright. The hoop clamp itself is really, really grippy. It's got these four rubber blocks, two top and two on bottom. That lets it hold on to the hoop really tightly so it won't slip, but it also protects the hoop. So you're not gonna have to worry about scratching up any really exotic, nice wood finishes. The 
second adjustment here is the cam angle. Now I've got this set up at the moment as a strap drive, but this also works with the direct drives fitted. You can rotate the cam. Now the cam here is almost a perfect circle, but it has a slight edge, so you get a slight eccentric cam feel. Now if you rotate this cam down, it's going to make it more like a fully round cam and be a very linear feel. If you angle it upwards, it's going to accentuate that edge and make it feel a little bit more like an eccentric cam. But as well as that, we can also open the cam up. This is a split cam design, which means that once you turn this screw here, it starts to push the top half of the cam forward, which emphasizes and accents that eccentric cam feel. You can make it more of an eccentric cam. And then you can play around with that angle adjustment as well to really find any in between. And again, like all the adjustments, we have notches marked here, so it's very easy to see how you've got it set because this is infinitely adjustable. It's not in you know one or two positions. You can go from one end to the next and anywhere in between. Now obviously if we change the shape of the cam, that's gonna alter the height of the footboard. So this also has an independently adjustable footboard height. What we do is we use the screw that's on the bottom here, and if we push it in or pull it further back, it's going to lower or raise the angle of the footboard. Now on the direct drive, this adjustment won't just raise or lower the footboard, it'll also change the geometry of the link. So it's gonna massively impact whether it feels like an eccentric cam or more of a linear feel. So you could dial it in for super lightweight speed or more added punch. And because of that, the direct drive comes with a separately independent height adjustment. So you can still get all the benefits of all those adjustments and still get that football angle exactly where you want it. The next adjustment is the beta angle. The beta angle makes a big difference to your playing because if you've got more of a beta throw, you're gonna get more of a punch when you land, but also that further distance that you're gonna travel is gonna allow the spring to stretch more. So you can play with a lighter spring tension, but by the time you get to the drum, the spring's really cranked and very responsive. And this is independently adjustable to the footboard height. You just need to loosen this screw here, and then you can rotate the beta forwards or back to get it closer or further away from the bass drum. Underneath the pedal, we've got these rubbery foam kind of pads all across the pedal to hold it in place when you're on a more hard surface rather than a carpet. It also works pretty well on carpet. It also has two very sharp retractable spikes that are set at a really good angle. So it, these actually do a really good job compared to most spikes that I've used. And then it comes supplied with optional Velcro, which I have attached here. Only it's not really Velcro. It's more like a really, really hard plastic that's in the shape of like little mushrooms. So it grips into carpet brilliantly well, but it doesn't get clogged up in the way the Velcro does with hair and dirt and things like that that then makes it useless in a couple of months time. This is a much more efficient version of Velcro. So that means that these pedals are gonna stay perfectly solid and exactly where you put them, no matter what playing surface you're on. So that's it for part one. Please make sure that you check out part two where I'm gonna show you even more features and very, very cool things about these pedals.